What's going on, y'all? It's Javon.ca, and we are here again for another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K. Now, we came all the way to London, Ontario to meet the legendary, the one, the only, Mr. Kellen James. Now, he's, what, 33 years old? And uh, he's at this point now where he's got 88 rental units. Now, he did this all with no joint venture partner. So a lot of people end up going out and wanting to raise money. But Kellen has done it all on his own and built up a snowball from saving back when he was at work, living frugally. And in this episode, he's going to dive into some of the techniques and tools that he used on that journey. We broke down some of his beliefs, some of the things that he's done, some of the things that he's doing, and a little bit about where he's going in the future. Then we got a little bit of a prediction in this episode that we might have to revisit by the time it actually drops. But regardless, I think you're going to like it. And if you think it's tough to buy a house i think this episode might show you some ways how and some ways that you might be able to restructure those beliefs so i'm really excited to give him an opportunity to introduce himself i'm kellen james i uh, i built a portfolio of 88 units of rental real estate i did it with no partners um, which is kind of a big part of what i did to differentiate myself over the years it was something that i actually thought was a natural progression you know you buy your first property your second property like why not just keep buying your own buildings a lot of people they feel like they get stuck. They don't know how to continue scaling. Maybe the deals they're doing aren't good enough to be able to pull the equity out to continue uh, acquiring. So they bring on partners maybe to get approval for financing because they're not sure how to do the financing more on their own, mm -hmm. or they didn't pull up enough, pull, pull off, pull out enough equity from the others to continue on. So that was uh, that's been my focus is like doing really good burr projects, buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and uh, really good burr projects so that I can continue to keep that momentum up dude who is kellen before real estate investing um you know take I, me back where were you like, yeah we're I, in london ontario right now yeah so but where are you from originally man? i grew up in sault st marie um i was there actually until i was 22 um so i stayed there after high school and i did university there i lived at my parents house uh for four years i paid my way through university but lived at home mm -hmm. um so i didn't have to pay for living expenses at least well i paid for my own food and stuff but i paid for my school and and then when I was 22, moved to London. I moved here for work, um, just in the tech world, because um, I did a computer science degree. So I did systems integration for Cisco, uh, Cisco Systems, and then worked for another company doing like uh, quality assurance, like yeah. software QA, yeah. QA management and stuff. And by the end of my career, I I, I, I only maxed out at 80K a year. So mm -hmm. I never had a massive salary or anything like that. Yeah. You know, real estate was significantly less expensive when I was when I was initially acquiring it from like 2016 until I eventually quit my job in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, the same principles all apply. Um, and uh, yeah, it's all about adding value to these buildings, learning how the banking system works, learning how to continue getting quali you know, qualifying, getting approvals for mortgages and uh, yeah, continue to scale. Why did you even buy real estate in the first place? Like you're a software engineer. Why don't you just stay, stick to software? It wasn't software my guy. passion. I, I think like, you know, when I was in computer science, I saw what it looked like for people to be passionate about programming. And <laughs> it wasn't what I, it wasn't, I wasn't passionate about it. I, I've, mm. I've always viewed it as a bit of a means to an end. Okay. Um, and I think initially I viewed real estate as a, like my plan was for it to be sort of a means to an end. I, I started um, in say 20, I don't know, say 20, 12 <laughs> really like as soon as i graduated i was like i started working i sat down at the desk and you know day after day week after week and i went oh well this is going to be monotonous for 30 years yeah. and, and so pretty quickly <laughs> i was like well there's lots of people who would accept that as mm -hmm. the way life's going to be um mm -hmm. and you know more power to them if they're happy doing that but i knew that it wasn't going to be what i wanted to do so um i started looking for a way out and i found um financial independence, uh, you know, blogs and things like that. And Mr. Money Mustache yeah, um, talking about like index funds and, you know, just living frugally, which I was already doing. So I resonated with because mm -hmm. I was always really good at saving. Um, and uh, the idea of, you know, just index funds, you know, uh, the 4% safe withdrawal rate and the, the ability to say retire in 10, 15 years kind of thing rather than, you know, 25, 30 years or longer. Mm -hmm. um, or never. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, there's a way out. Okay, that's yeah. good. Well, I know I'm going to start saving. And so I, I was heading down that that path for quite a while with the plan to do it with yeah. index funds. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and then I was like, well, at what point do I buy a house? You know, I still, uh, when I moved to London, I actually sold my car because I wanted to save every penny I could. So I walked to work, 
Um, I worked a second job as well after my full-time job. What was the, to, what was the second I job? worked uh, for Intel, like the, you know, the processor company. Yeah. I worked just like doing like sales stuff for them in a Best Buy. Okay. Yeah. So cool. just like on weekends. Um, wow. So I worked all the time, saved what I could. And, and I knew that I wanted to, at some point I'm going to want to buy a house. And then I was like, mm-hmm. well, what about a duplex? Like I saw these places with two mailboxes and two doors. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, the one side's paying rent. That's pretty cool. Like, and, um, and so I was like, well, a duplex could make sense. And, and so I started looking at these kinds of properties a little bit. And then, you know, some years passed, I ended up not buying anything. And then at one point, um, someone on the financial independence subreddit on Reddit was like, hey, what, you should check out Bigger Pockets. Or I saw a comment about Bigger Pockets. And the, and the rabbit hole. And that hole. was the rabbit hole. <laughs> as soon as I saw Bigger Pockets, yeah. I, uh, you know, I went on there, I listened to like 100 episodes. Um, of the early episodes, which were awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and, and they kept repeating like, Hey, if you want to get in touch with people in your own city on bigger pockets, just set an alert for the word like London, Ontario, for yeah. example. And so I set an alert and then a couple months later uh, something, and I got an email and it was like, someone mentioned London, Ontario on bigger pockets <laughs> on this website. And, uh, and, and it was a, now a friend of mine actually, mm-hmm. who, uh, you know, we ended up meeting up and a few of us at the time it was like Matt McKeever and a few other folks, um, met up and, uh, and, you know, uh, I was ins- pretty quickly inspired by the fact that there are people in my city who had like at the time, like, you know, Matt had like 13 units Crazy. and I was like, I've got nothing. And I'm yeah. looking to maybe buy a duplex, maybe I'll buy with 20% down and do this. And he, and th- he was like, why not with 5% down? You know, mm-hmm. he, he, Matt ended up being one of my early mentors for years, uh, really, um, because he told me, he, he taught me about how to, um, you know, how to keep up acquisition momentum, mm. how to not over improve buildings and, you know, add value strategically, um, you know, how to do the refinance process, get your money out, keep that momentum up. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was sort of the, in, that was sort of the, you know, we ended up starting meetup groups and, yeah. and getting lots of people out and cool. Yeah. Was that your first mentor? Yes. Yeah. In the, in the real estate space. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, I think, I think if people really need to recognize they have mentors all around them all yeah. over the place and like, like we were talking about video games earlier before the podcast and like, you know, if I wanted to get really good at Rocket League, which is a game I play. I'd crush it in Rocket yeah, League. Yeah, if I wanted to get great at Rocket <laughs> League, I would I would go on YouTube and I'd and I'd look at people who are really good at Rocket League that sell coaching, honestly. Mm. And I'd, they're, cause they're like 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, right? Like yeah. for like an hour, like, mm-hmm. you know, mentorship for things outside of real estate are actually really affordable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's because while well, the value they're bringing isn't anywhere near the same as, you know, mentorship in the real estate space, yeah. or, you know, if you were in the, in this, you know, into stock trading or things like that, their value proposition is much stronger with mm-hmm. video games. It's cheap, but yeah. you know, I, I think that it's such a, it's such a hack. It's such mm-hmm. a, it's such a cheat sheet to just hire a mentor to teach things. It's like, I, I was never great with, um, you know, I, I like, elementary school high school that kind of stuff mm-hmm. sitting in a big class it was never for me so the one-on-one stuff was always key yeah. and and did you know that from early on or is that more of a recent belief that you've adopt- adopted more recent it, it, it was something that um you know i started to recognize it once i started uh providing it for other people because yeah. i was like whoa like people can you know people can progress they're standing on the shoulders of giants. Like yeah. you're just like, here's the playbook, just follow it. Mm-hmm. And they trust because they've seen the process work, you know, for people like myself and mm-hmm. they just follow the playbook. And I've had multiple students leave their jobs at this point, traveling the world and all this cool stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, this is cool. And, and like, I want to apply this for myself. I hired a coach as well. Mm-hmm. You know, any, anything I want to learn about at this point, I'm just going to hire people to teach me yeah. um, because it just saves so much time. You save weeks or months or mm-hmm. years of rumination and just churning through these thoughts in your head and stuff. And it's just like, how do I do this? And someone yeah. who's done it before is like, here's the playbook. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a, it, it's a, you know, uh, a time machine. Like, yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. So what, what types of things are you learning these days? So these days, a lot of what I try to do is focus on um, the highest level decisions I can make in my business okay. because more and more, you know, you know, in the early days of real estate investing, it's you're you're a cowboy kind of thing yeah. or a cowgirl, and you're you know you're you're really uh, you're you're maybe you're doing renovations yourself, mm-hmm. you know, you're self managing everything, you're doing you know. So over the years, you know, very quickly actually, I started hiring out all the renovations. I haven't done renovations myself uh, for, for probably five years now. Nice. Um, and uh and then hired out property management brought on um like a, a gc so that like renos are now managed 
uh, on my behalf. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, in the social media space, I was like, I'm doing all this myself. I hired a video editor. Now my social media is growing really quickly because I don't have to do any of it myself so Mm -hmm. it can scale well. Um, I hired, you know, an an assistant, an executive assistant more recently as well, which... um, which has been an amazing, uh, amazing thing for just time savings because yeah. really every hour that my assistant is doing things, it saves me an hour, which is amazing. Yeah. Like that's not always going to be the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, over the years, it just became more and more apparent to me the value of outsourcing, the value of mentorship, um, and how those are other forms of leverage aside from just you know financial leverage. There's, yeah. there's other forms of it. So when were, when was the first time you made a hundred grand in a year? Do you remember? Yeah, it was it was twenty. Uh, it was my it was my f- uh, second building actually. Second um, building. Second okay. building. So the first one I bought, um, and you know I bought it for a good price. Um, yeah. uh, I paid one seventy seven for a duplex. When was this? Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah, oh they were asking one eighty five, and I, I offered one. All right, we settled on one seventy seven, um, <laughs> and I lived in that one half of that building and rented yeah. the other. Yeah. And then moved into the other side and rented the other side, and mm-hmm. then. Um, but then while I was doing that, um, I bought a duplex, um, that was really run down mm-hmm. and I, um, paid, uh, 127 for it. Holy smokes. And, uh, four months later, uh, it was worth 250, which was around the market value of duplex at the time. This yeah. was just in such bad shape that I got a really great deal. Mm-hmm. So I put, I only put 25 into it. So I was in for about one, little over 150 mm-hmm. and, uh, and it reappraised at 250. So that was my wow. first, that was my first like very clear hundred yeah. grand equity built. Yeah. Um, and that was a perfect burr, which yeah. meant that I was able to pull all my money out. And yeah. Congrats. So that was the wake up call for sure. So that, that probably changed a lot for you. It because was, yeah. it, there's a point when everything's theory, but then once it gets into practice, it really feels different, doesn't it? Yeah. It was, that was like the wake up call of like, mm-hmm. <clears throat> why don't I do 10 more of these? Like, why don't I do <laughs> as many of these as possible? Yeah. There, you know, the, I made more that I made more on that than I made in like two years of salary at the time. I think I was making mm-hmm. like 50 grand. Yeah. So you know, that was like two years of salary in four months and I did it on even, in evenings and weekends. And it was mm-hmm. no, don't get me wrong. It was, a, it was a challenge, you know, mm-hmm. this property, um, especially doing these rentals and stuff myself. And dude, sitting down for eight hours, 10 hours a day at work is a challenge, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not anywhere near as fun. Like yeah. the, the, the stress of the stress in you guys would know this with video, right? Like the, the stress and interviewing and stuff. That's, that's fun. Like that yeah. type of stress. Yeah. Maybe there is stress involved with it, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but nowhere near the stress of like, I have a, an exam tomorrow or some, you know, bullshit. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, when you can self-impose stress and you can, you mm-hmm. know, have, you know, intentional hardship and, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, control over your, over the work you're doing. That's the fun stress. Yeah. Um, and I think you just have to choose your stress. Yeah. It's the self-inflicted. I mean, there's always yeah. going to be stress, like life without stress. Yeah. It's like boring. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right? no. Well, and, so, and, and I experienced that because, yeah. you know, 2019 is when I left my day job. Um, mm-hmm. that, at that point, I had 52, 52 units uh, with no. With you, had, no you had 52 units by the time you left your day job. It was, yeah, two so, and a half. It was, uh, or actually, thir- sorry, it was 32 units when I left my day job. And then, uh, what was it? And then, I, I, wow, I'm trying. I was like, at some point, I hit, oh, yes, 52 units when I, when I outsourced my property management. Mm. 32 units, I, had my, I left my day job. That was 10 properties. Um, triplexes duplexes a sixplex um yeah. so 32 units self-managed all that and self-managed it all until 52 units now what was that relationship like with work at the time because you probably got friends that are like oh yeah like we love this software job. Well, yeah, yeah you know i mean I, I i did you keep the life separate I kept, it re- I kept it relatively quiet so you're like um, batman you're just like well at nighttime they knew what i was doing okay. um but i wasn't talking about it constantly mm-hmm. uh, like because i had an outlet for that at meetups and with friends and i was starting mm-hmm. to build friendships with people that are to this day some of my best friends yeah um because you want people around you that understand what you're doing you know mm-hmm. oftentimes when you get really obsessed with something your friends and family don't seem to understand or resonate no. with it and you know you hope that at least they support you yeah uh, and luckily my friends and family did mm-hmm. um, and, and still do um but yeah it was uh what was your question again i went on a rant uh just like that relationship with work it's okay yeah. rents, rents are great man yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay like we're, we're i know i want to pull it back though but yeah. it was yeah the relationship with work i was I was, I know I remember running into the basement of this building all like multiple times a day to answer phone calls. Um, you know, I remember a like good real estate phone calls, real estate phone calls. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, like doing deals and, mm-hmm. and managing contractors and mm-hmm. uh, dealing with tenants and stuff, even in the middle of my workday. And, 
and uh you know, kind of trying to hide that fact to some degree, but they knew kind of what I was doing. But yeah. I, I, at some point my phone was ringing constantly. So I was running to the basement all the time yeah. doing deals. And, um, and then, uh, like, so I actually, um, I was planning on quitting okay. in 2019. Uh, we were my, my, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, um, what's we her were, name? Uh, Angie. Shout out Angie. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so she, she and I were planning on both quitting our jobs and, uh, and going on this van trip. And okay. so, we we lined up plans. I said, okay, in two weeks, I'm going to give my two weeks notice. Okay. And then like a few days later, I got laid off. No way. Why? Because yeah. you're always in the basement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because at some point along the lines, yeah. what I what I was really good at was um, outsourcing. Mm. <laughs> and when you outsource your own job in yeah. your in your employee land, yeah. it means that you're no longer needed. Yeah. In in uh, entrepreneur land, that's the best thing you can do. You 100%. Know? So, um, so, you know, I was, I, I was passing along a lot of my roles to people to the point where, I, you know, because I was, man- I was getting more into the management space and then, yeah. um, but yeah, so I, it was just not a passion of mine. I wasn't, I uh, was doing not very much work uh, towards yeah. that end, toward yeah. the end there. Um, and and was there like a tension growing between you and the work at I the I think time? it was an invisible tension okay. to some degree. So um, it was just within you? Right? Um, I think it was, I think it was, no, I, I do think that like um, people noticed, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, but I mean, it, coworkers and stuff, there, were, there weren't issues with coworkers, okay. but I'm sure that my boss was like, oh, more could have gotten done here. I was yeah, like, well, yeah. I was doing deals. <laughs> so, That's funny. But it, it was perfect because, you know, when you get laid off, you can get severance, et cetera. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, and then the same thing ended up happening uh, to my my girlfriend at the time, my wife. No way. She also got laid off coincidentally at like at basically the exact same time, like a, wow. two, maybe a week or two later as well. Um, so then we were like, perfect, let's go. And yeah. we, we bought, we had a sprinter van that we bought and we, uh, is that know, the one? Yeah. It's the one tucked around back here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no so way. yeah, That's we've awesome had it for, too. we've had it for like four years now or more. And yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we, we renovated ourselves. We put a bed in the back. Um, we brought our dog and mm. we left for, uh, we left for three months and wow. lived in that van, wow. slept in Walmart parking lots. And it wasn't expected to be three months at the time. Right? It was actually, Oh, okay, it was okay. the plan was to leave for three months. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, and that was a big, a big part of the, like, you no, know, we have to, we have to quit. Yeah. We have to do this. Like yeah. when, are, when else are we going to do this? You know, mm-hmm. I had reached 10 buildings at the time as well. Mm-hmm. That's when Scotia bank starts, you know, not, you can't get bank loans anymore from typical uh, lenders, yeah. traditional lenders. So, um, I knew that was the cutoff when it comes to traditional financing anyway. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, the plan was quit, leave for three months. And then we did, we slept in Walmart parking lots for free. Mm-hmm. Um, so every morning we can get up and just go into Walmart, get the food for the day, use the washroom, brush our teeth and yeah, and keep it moving. Yeah. And then we, we showered at planet fitness, uh, because we paid like what, like 10, $15, $10 whatever membership. a month. Yeah. And we could shower anywhere in the States basically because yeah. there's planet fitness everywhere. Yeah. And so we would go shower, we'd get, you know, I'd use the massage chair, maybe get a quick workout in and, you know, <laughs> and, and, uh, but other, yeah, we traveled 30,000 kilometers, um, in three months. Wow. And, uh, we, we went from, uh, London, Ontario up to Maine, down to South Carolina, across all the way to LA up to Vancouver, Canada, and then, and then back again, and then back. So we circled the States. Uh, we saw like 30 something national parks. Yeah. Um, wow. and a whole, I forget, I forget all, actually there's the map right there. Um, oh, no way. Yeah. So was that, was, you think that was one of the most rewarding? It Absolutely. Looks, it looks like you stopped twice in Utah. We loved Utah. Dude, that place is gorgeous. We did, yeah. We, yeah. we did, dipped into Utah a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, I swam in uh, the lake, the Salt Lake there, which Crazy. you should not do. It's terrible. <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. Um, I, I think that I realized once I was there that no one actually swims in this lake, like, because it's a salty lake. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, Probably burns your eyes, man. But that was like, yeah, but that was a... Uh, that was a big moment for for me in my investing career, also yeah. for our relationship, because we had we had been dating for less than a year at that time. Okay, and so we went. And this lived. was this was sink or swim right here. It was yes. either we make we survive yeah. this trip and we're and we're thugging exactly. it out together. This is we're yeah. doing life. We've or, been together like eight months or something, yeah. and, and we're like, let's go live in a van for three months together. And mm-hmm. and I mean, we yeah, it was it was clearly like a, let's see how this let's see how this goes. Like yeah. it really can only go really well or really poorly. <laughs> yeah, literally, there's no in between. No. This is either going to be the greatest trip of our lives or the yeah. worst trip. And we loved it. Yeah, yeah. we ended up loving it. So, so yeah. as you look back, you think that's still a highlight? Uh, yeah, that's still one of, to this day still one of the coolest things that I think we that I've ever done. I mm. I had never gone on a vacation for more than a week at that point. Really? So why, why not? Because of work, right? 
Well, yeah. And because just like with frugality with money, I was similar with vacation time and things like that. So yeah. I would stretch it and I would do like long weekends and whatever. And I never, never for more than a week ever. Mm-hmm. So three months was the first time I'd ever been away from home for that length of time. Yeah. You know, um, it was, it, I got homesick around probably like two, two and a half months. I was like, I'm starting to get homesick for mm-hmm. sure. I miss my friends and family. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, obviously we were having a great time, but uh, towards the, towards that last, the Northern part of the state. So I was like, yeah, let's, yeah. you know, we're looking Ready forward to, to kind of getting home now. And, yeah. and then when we got back, it was, um, now what, you know, yeah, I, I'm not going back to work. So it's, it's Monday. Now what? Now right? what? Um, and so I was like, well, I'm enjoying real estate. I mean, so we'll just keep doing this. Yeah. Uh, and so I, uh, I was like, well, how am I going to get financing? Mm-hmm. So this was at the 10, this is at the 10, 10 loans mark. Yeah. So you're at this, you're at this roadblock. Yeah. What, what do you do? Yeah. So that was when, um, I, I started talking with as many people as I could because, mm-hmm. you know, the idea is who, not how, right. Um, I don't know how, so who knows the answer? Yeah. That's the same with mentorship really is yeah. the who, not how. So, mm-hmm. um, I called a bunch of mortgage brokers, friends, investors, things like that. You know, Hey, wh- how can you get you know, mortgages when you can't, when you don't have T4 income. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, eventually I found that credit unions are an option. Okay. And so, um, credit unions are like local banks basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and instead of 80% loan to value, they're more like 75%. Their rates are maybe a little bit higher. Although these days they actually can be a little bit lower, mm-hmm. um, than traditional banks I'm finding. Um, and they're, then uh, they're doing whatever they can. I mean, think about it. Are. If you were to start a bank, how would you get customers? Right? Yeah, no, exactly. You make and, it more favorable than the real banks. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they're, they're just so much more like they asked for my bio when mm-hmm. I start, you know, like, who are you? What's your story? Like, mm-hmm. when does like TD bank ask you this or whatever? Right. She like no one care cares. About you. No. So they were like, <laughs> yeah. what's your story and whatever. And, and like, they want to know this stuff because they want to know who they're working with. Mm-hmm. And, and so that was really refreshing. And, uh, but the most refreshing part about it was getting refinance funds and getting approval for financing, uh, for new acquisitions. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, lending was a little bit more difficult, you know, because more larger down payments and, and lower amortization and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it allowed, it just made, it was, it was, it, it forced me to make sure the deals were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so once I found that, um, I uh, was able to continue scaling without the the day job income. Yeah. At which point I, I sort of viewed my act. I, I was still, you know, I am still doing active, you know, work. Um, so like I wouldn't say I was retired, but yeah. I definitely had retired from the nine to five. And Dude, I you were retired for two and a half months and you got bored. Yeah, like, exactly. Well, no. that's, that's, that was, that was how <laughs> yeah. we got to this. It yeah. was, yeah, it was, uh, you, you, very quickly you want to you 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 want to be doing something you want to be making yeah. progress and whatever that and it doesn't have to be you know, income generating it doesn't have to be work yeah. you know you know for a lot of people they could there's plenty of people who could probably very well fill their time with you know fitness and mm-hmm. relationships and friends and travel and mm-hmm. all sorts of these things um, but i find even travel mm-hmm. for a lot of people you do a lot of that it's work and, and you're like <laughs> and yeah it's it's but you're also yeah. like you want to get back and do some do some actual work you know yeah, yeah. um at least for me my wife could travel forever um <laughs> and, and we have we've gone to uh in 2021, we did um, Australia for a month, New nice. Zealand for two weeks, nice. Norway for three weeks. Wow! Um, like we did Costa Rica, Dominican. Um, it, has uh, lifestyle always been kind of like a priority for you, or because like when did when no. did what? Yeah, talk about that change from frugality to um, you know kind of like this emphasis on lifestyle. This is only this is only recent for me. Um, yeah. The travel and stuff. Um, Travel was never actually a large interest of mine. I mean, yeah. love road trips. Yeah. Uh, so I've always loved road trips. So that was an Cheap interest ass. of mine. But yeah, but all the, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a romantic thing of like, the yeah. road, you know, you get yeah. in place of music and drive for hours. Yeah. That's the, the desti- and, that's the destination. Yeah. You know? the, you, yeah. I can enjoy that journey, yeah. you know, flying places. I do not enjoy that process. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, I've, we've seen a lot of amazing things in all these travels, but, mm-hmm. um, but I really love road trips and, you know, flying to very specific destinations. And yeah. so I got burnt out with travel. And so, mm. um, and yeah, actually during 2021 was also when I, I had actually gotten burnt out from doing like too much coaching and too much, uh, in the real estate space a bit yeah. for a bit there. Yeah. Um, I found that like point of burnout because I, you know, I've, I have ADHD and so I tend to really hyper focus on things, okay. uh, when I find things that are like a good source of dopamine for me. And so real yeah. estate has been that yeah. forever. So um, how did, how did your, so even before we get too too far into the lifestyle yeah. piece, right? How has your buy box changed? Because you mentioned um, as you go into the credit unions, they get a little bit more difficult 
to yeah. to scale. So you probably had like this general criteria that you were investing with before, and then as as they slap on some new criteria, that kind of changed for you. Like, it, it wasn't so much the criteria of the banks that changed. Uh, mm-hmm. It was more so I did make a change into larger apartment buildings. Okay. Um, the, and this was around that same time. This was around that time. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it was. And it, but it wasn't so. Again, it wasn't so much because of what the banks expected. They would have okay. been perfectly happy to continue getting buying two to four unit buildings. Yeah. I just thought. You know, I started to realize if I'm going to be outsourcing management for these things, I want to make sure that the, this is a simple portfolio okay. that's easy to outsource, that's easier to keep an eye on. Yeah. You know, having mo- having fewer large buildings versus a bunch of small ones is just mm-hmm. less mental bandwidth. I've mm-hmm. always had a pretty good idea of what's on my mind and, and keeping a, keeping in touch with my mental bandwidth. And so, mm-hmm. um, you know, I started buying more six unit, eight unit. I have a 12 plex, a 24 unit, yeah. um, a, a couple eight plexes. And so I started buying these a little bit larger buildings because mm-hmm. it was just less to think about when I buy a 24 unit building. It's, a, it's so much less to think about than 12 duplexes or something. Yeah. Um, so, you know, people talk about the one roof and the one furnace and whatever, or whatever it is, but you know, and that, that helps for sure. Um, mm-hmm. but mostly for mental bandwidth just yeah. less to think about so you could get the same amount of units with with way less transactional yeah power way less i guess it, i guess it's similar following up in terms of number of tenants but in terms of like yeah the all the expenses being under one roof yeah the, renovations are a lot more you know predictable typically yeah. when they're a little bit more purpose-built at least or mm-hmm. you know and i have plenty of converted dwellings but i have some that are a little more purpose-built um you know half and half even mm-hmm. but i mean a big part of it that a lot of people don't talk about is with six units and up that's when you can really start valuing buildings off of cap rates yeah. versus more comparable sales yeah you know comparable sales can be a little less predictable mm-hmm. um but when you get into six units and up you can reverse engineer the value of a building based on its net operating income mm-hmm. and so um you can you can uh, you can make more predictable acquisitions and more predictable uh burrs and you can understand how the numbers shake out a little more yeah um and so that's a you know, the the larger your business gets, the more you do have to introduce systems and mm-hmm. standard operating procedures and things like that. And so when you, you know, you, you tend to favor things that are a little more predictable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, larger, larger buildings has been my focus. Although I did just buy a triplex recently because I found a good, <laughs> found a good deal and I couldn't yeah. pass it up. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not closed off to the idea of any smaller buildings. Yeah, so how are you, how are you finding deals? How are you finding deals before? How are you finding deals these days? Um, so a lot of off market, um, probably about half my portfolio has been off market and half on the market. Is that just relationships with sellers? Is it wholesalers? Is it people coming to you? Everything. I guess it's all of that. Yeah. It's so like building the social media helps, you know, people do send me things. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I tend to mention a lot of finders fees, you know, it used to be a thousand bucks and now it's like 2,500 bucks, Mm -hmm. you know, 2,500 bucks. If you just, (laughs) yeah, yeah, if you just shoot me a, shoot me a text with like the phone number of an owner. If I I, I end up getting in touch with that person and buying the property, you get 2,500 bucks. Mm. So, you know, you get people every once in a while, like, Hey, you know, Mm -hmm. sending you leads that way. But yeah, talking to wholesalers. Um, I I, honestly, I I think I only bought one property from a wholesaler before. It was always finding my own deals. Yeah. Kind of do what the wholesalers do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did plenty of door knocking. You can send out flyers and drop flyers off in people's mailboxes. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a lot of like, talking with contractors you can talk with like your pest control people for like yeah. you know whatever like which house is messy yeah exactly yeah. like junk removal people like you know demo guys like which houses are you doing this work in because maybe the owners are willing to sell so mm-hmm. all over the place and yeah. you, that's the only way to approach off-market deals uh or one of the best ways i think the, the other is a massive flyer campaign but those are a lot less effective right now than they ever used to be so mm. um yeah it's really about networking with people and knocking on doors and talking to people and yeah you know you can you can send mail you can send letters directly to owners as well Hmm. um you can find their mailing address and on public records so yeah so when you're when your networking comes in handy i guess like your social media becomes like a real huge asset towards that yeah so social media yeah the goal of it is another form of leverage Mm -hmm. um you know one to many conversations so Mm -hmm. i can make a post and you know, thousands of people will see it and mm-hmm. I don't need to have a thousand or two thousand or 10,000 individual conversations. Yeah. Um, so that's the value of podcasts. You know, it's, it's building trust as well. I've been doing this for seven years now. People can watch podcasts that I did seven years ago. Crazy. Talking about these things and, and, uh, long form content really helps with that. Mm. Uh, because you can only bullshit for so long when you're talking <laughs> for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
but and people get a whiff of it after a bit you know like mm-hmm. <laughs> at least yeah, i like to think they do and so you you focus on growing the social media now but was it always that i mean didn't you have a blackout period yeah so so it, I, talk to I, me about that how that even came to be yeah yeah so in 2021 i think it was um was when i you know that was when we did a lot of traveling and things like that mm-hmm. and when i just realized i was spending you know I was doing really well in the real estate space and even I was comparing myself with people. When did you when did you start calling saying to yourself I'm doing well? Like when did when did well for yourself become a thing? Um before I retired cuz like when I had like six buildings Which part was the retire, sorry? Uh like quit, like quit when job. I quit my job. Okay. Yeah, yeah, when I when I left my job in 20. Yeah. So probably like you know a couple years in. You know, okay. when I had like 20 plus units, 30 units, yeah. I was like, okay, like things are working here. This is going well. Mm-hmm. You know, my net, you know, when you hit like a million dollar net worth milestone, that helps like yeah. um yeah, so I mean, that's when you start. And, but like, you know, we were hosting meetup groups. People were, were having, you know, holding value in your words. That's a big part of it. You know, when mm-hmm. people are like interested in hearing what you have to say, mm-hmm. you know, when you go to an event and people are coming up to you and asking questions, then yeah. you're like, oh, this is cool. Like, this is, yeah. you know, I, I feel like I'm doing the right thing here, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's that's cool, man. So yeah, this blackout. Yes. Let's yeah, so... Yeah, so the blackout. Bring you back to center, you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in 2021 or so, uh, I found myself, even though I was doing well in real estate, that yeah. was when um, I was still finding myself comparing myself with other people. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so I just realized, you know, and I was I was doing a lot of coaching at the time, so I, I had taken on more students than I probably felt like, you know, I, I felt like taking on in reality. Yeah. Um, and so. And it was all one on one, so mm. not not particularly efficient. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, and I was doing like twelve month uh, programs at the time with people, so I had made a lot of commitments. I'd worked with a lot of people, and so mm-hmm. I, you know, and I, I when I make a commitment, I stick through. So mm-hmm. I was, you know, making sure to provide as much value as I could to all these people, mm-hmm. and doing all my own real estate stuff, and also trying to live my life, and all of it was just like this is too much. Yeah, and so and I saw what everyone sees with social media the downsides of it mm-hmm. um and the comparing yourself and the you know um all that and i wasn't even talking about like the cheap dopamine you know uh it was for me it was just the just the like comparing yourself really with yeah. other people it's like oh this person got this one I yeah get this one I and you start and, and plenty of people do this you make decisions for yourself that you wouldn't have made uh, had you just thought about what you want yeah you know you're looking at what other people want and then mm-hmm. you're doing what they want mm-hmm. and and be- because you think it's also what you want so that was a big problem for me yeah uh for everyone uh, for many people it is so i realized i need to just stop looking at what other people are doing mm-hmm. and it'll allow me to be a little more in touch with what i want mm-hmm. um so for so i was like i'm gonna stop you know one of my friends a, a couple of my friends at the time they were like i want i'm off instagram it's been a month mm-hmm. and like they weren't people who were at, were particularly they weren't influencers or whatever right yeah um and I was like, well, this would be a bit more of a big deal for me to jump off because, you know, I've, I've been in that space and it's been a, a big part of my life for a while. But I'm yeah. going to I'm going to drop off for like a month as well and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. And then it was like three months. And then I was like, I'm going to go a year. Like, wow. I'm just going to. Yeah. Like I, I've I, I had lost any desire to go back onto it, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and when I say off social media, I mean, I wasn't on Instagram or Facebook. I wasn't looking at what other real estate investors were doing in the space. You know, I wasn't watching their YouTube videos or anything like that. I was just. Um, you know, I would go on YouTube and watch like comedy or whatever. Right. Um, yeah. but I wasn't, uh, you know, and I'd still go on like Netflix and all these things, but wasn't dropping off all media, mm-hmm. uh, but just like, you know, and, and then I was like, you know, at some point I probably will reapproach social media, but I want to make sure I don't fall, vic- fall into the same trap again. What do you think taking that, that space, sorry, what do you think, what do you think taking that space, um, and giving yourself that time away really did to your mind? Um, it, you know, and it's actually been a bit, so I, I'm trying to bring myself back to what it felt like. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that I wasn't like, I'm going to travel. He- I never, not that I ever did this, but like, I'm going to travel here to show people I'm on this beach. Here. And I never did that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you know, to some degree, you might do that. I'm, I might have done that a bit with real estate, even, you know, like mm-hmm. making sure that, you know, or coaching, like making sure I'm doing things that are my own goals, you know? Yeah. And so it allowed me to get more in touch with the things that I wanted for myself and for my future. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've always been pretty bad at goal setting, honestly. I've really? always, yeah, I've always been terrible at it. Um, really? 88 rentals and you're bad at goal setting? Yeah, it, it was me just following 
the dopamine. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was like, I'm loving this and I'm working my ass off, but like, it's all just going well and I'm enjoying it. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. Um, but it was never, uh, I, I had no intention of having a portfolio to this, of this size. Really? I still have no idea. I'm getting more clarity on my goals now. Okay. So uh, more, as of more recently, I made the switch to prioritizing lifestyle first. Really? Uh, for a good long time, it was always building the portfolio, get my net worth as high as I can. That's the number one, you know, yeah. in, in the business space. And, yeah. And then, I, you know, and, and of course, enjoy my life. And, and I've always prioritized my relationships. But mm-hmm. um, but now it's like, well, what do I want my lifestyle to be? You know, we're married now. In the future, we'll, we'll have kids and stuff. So I want to, you know, that really helps to clarify a lot of things, too. When mm-hmm. you're like, you know, in the future, when kids come along, you know, I don't want to be having to work for eight hours or having to do what, you know, you, you know, I want to have systems in place so that I'm only doing what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the whole point in financial independence. It's yeah. the whole point is do what you want to do. And whenever and, you want, yeah, whenever <laughs> you want and, and work on the things you want to work on. And, you know, and, and what that comes down to is, is, um, you know, we talked about, should I start a podcast? Things like that. It's, yeah. it's recognizing these opportunities and saying no to them mm. because, there are more and more and more opportunities, you know, the, the bigger your career gets or whatever it is, there's yeah. more, you're faced with more and more of these. Yeah. And so, well, you, you have to pick only the good ones mm-hmm. you have. And that means saying no to all of the others. Mm. And that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. You know, it's a hard thing to do with a real estate deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with, with all sorts of business opportunities, you know, Hey, do you want to jump on a call with like these interesting person, whatever you like, you got to really pick which things make sense, you know? Yeah. Um, and so for me, that tends to be now focusing on higher leverage things. So mm-hmm. that's going to podcast are an example of yeah. that. Well, I'm honored that you decided to spend some time with yeah, us yeah. today. No, man. absolutely. Man, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you had a, a great vibe and it always okay. just helps to have those one to many conversations. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that I'm able to speak to a bunch of people at the same time. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and my goal, is always to try to provide as much value as I can in those mm-hmm. conversations. So what goals are you after these days? So I, I, so I'm getting more clarity on yeah. it, but I still suck at it. That's okay. That's um, okay. And, and maybe walk us through, cause you're probably a big reader. So by the end of this, shoot, maybe that's a section that we'll add to some books, yeah. some book recommendations, totally. but you probably, yeah, I know you mentioned four hour work week and Tim Ferriss's vibe, right? Yeah. So he has this, uh, the goal, I he's got this goal matrix where he's like, be, do have, okay. Yeah. Like, I remember how, that actually, how am I yeah. going to know that I'm yeah. going to, that I hit it? I'm curious, like, how do you structure your goals or how are you structuring them? At, not at this well, time? not properly. Um, <laughs> I mean, dude, it's yeah. your life. There's no such thing as properly, right? Yeah. That's you looking at social media again and it's creeping up. I yeah. can hear it. You know? Well, that's true. Yeah. I, the way I look at it is if I wake up in the morning, what do I want to start my day with? Okay. What do I want to do in the afternoon? What do I, how do yeah. I want to spend the evening? How does my week look as a whole? Okay. You know, what am I eating? Who am I with? Mm. What am I, you know, what kind of fitness am I doing? What mm-hmm. kind of work am I doing? What kind of deals am I doing? Um, yeah when am I traveling? How often am I traveling? Who am I spending my time with? Um, those are, and so really it's just like getting answers to those things and then, and then just saying no to the things that don't fit into that. And yes, to the things that do. So that's a great kind of like criteria in terms of like questions that you can ask yourself. Yeah. And I think for the people listening, that would probably be a useful tool for them to ask themselves. I hope so. Cause it's like, maybe you're right. And I, I really like how you said that is, you know, the social media thing could be impacting how I think goal setting should be done because mm-hmm. people have these systems. Dude, there's no show. And it's like, what do you, what do you want to spend your time doing? Yeah. You know, that's the, and, and, and what do you need in order mm-hmm. to, to be able to spend your time doing those things? Yeah. You need a certain amount of income. How do you, okay. How do you generate that much income? Yeah. And, and how does it, you know, how can you build a business or whatever it is that fits into that lifestyle that you have? So, yeah. You know, so that's me, you know, structuring my coaching business that way, Mm -hmm. the deals I do that way, the renovations, um, all that stuff. And just, you know, recognizing and checking in to see if the things I'm, you know, I've done time audits. So that's the thing Mm -hmm. I do where like, you know, Hormozy talked about it. 15 Um, minutes. Yeah. Every 15 minutes. What am I, what did I do? You know, I've done that. I did that for a couple of days. I was actually shocked. I was really happy with how I was spending my time. Most of it was high level decision-making and activities, which I was really happy about, but there were a few things in there, you know, where it's like, I shouldn't be doing these things, you Mm -hmm. know? Which and what what were some of the ones that you got rid of most recently? Um, this? Hiring an hiring an executive assistant was yeah. key for that. Yeah, I'll never call it utility company again. I'll never call my phone company again. Nice. Um, you know, uh, anytime anytime there are tasks that are repetitive in any way, mm-hmm. you know, I can hand that off. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, and then just you know, making sure that I'm focusing on you know, 
if it's on the portfolio side of things, acquisitions, yeah. key turnovers, mm-hmm. um, turnovers being tenant turnovers, tenant or? turnovers, getting okay. unit, getting rents up, you know, yeah. you t- in, in Ontario, you have to get the unit turned yeah. over before you can get the rent up. So yeah. cash for keys, a lot of those conversations. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, in the coaching business, how do I structure it such that I can have more one to many conversations? So that's mm-hmm. going to be maybe less one on one, more group coaching. So, yeah. You know, structuring it so that I only work with so many one-on-one people at a time, and, yeah. and the group stuff is structured in such a way that it provides great value for people, but doesn't take as much of my time. Yeah. So you know, yeah, so, and, I, and I'm making changes with all of these things such that the value is still there, but it doesn't require as much of my time and mental bandwidth. Yeah. Now, how did you decide on this coaching being the active income? Now, when you went back, when you came back from the trip, yeah. Um, you mentioned that relationship with active income being changed. You get to Monday and it's like, now what? Yeah. Um, so, and you're probably around all these wholesalers. You're probably around people doing rentals. You, you probably have a million different things that are, that are possibilities. Yeah. And like you said, with your ADHD and shiny object syndrome, you probably tried a million different things. Yeah. Maybe? And I think that like, it's interesting. I can speak to the focus concept mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and it's turned into one of my strengths, but only because it just wasn't uh, yeah. for so long. Yeah. And so you, you, that's why I can speak to it because I, I, I went through it and I've resolved it to some degree. Okay. Um, but um, what was your question there? I was gonna, active. Oh, active. Yeah. Income. So when it comes to my relationship with active income, mm-hmm. um, it was, you know, I had, I had outsourced my management. I'd outsourced the renovations. Yeah. Um, I was going out for lunch every single day with a friend of mine. Yeah. I, I was like, uh, you know, and I, I was actually, I was really enjoying my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's actually, if I look back to it, it's still one of the more, one of the like better chapters when okay. I was like, when it comes to like, quote unquote, work life balance. Yeah. Um, but I was just enjoying my life, my mm-hmm. lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I was a little bit bored. Uh, really? Yeah. Because, you know, I only worked for maybe a couple hours a day and I wanted to work. Maybe I, I was enjoying what I was doing, but I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do some things that were a little more exciting and whatever. And so it's like, Oh, coaching, you know, coaching is a great business model. Of course, it's very Mm -hmm. low expenses. And Mm -hmm. if people value your time, it it pays well. And, Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, I was like, well, why don't I get into that? You know, when it came to, you know, I did, I hosted so many free meetups, free podcasts. I've been post, I've been posting free content on my Instagram and stuff for five years at that point. I'd never charged anyone anything for anything. And, uh, But I did recognize through doing all of that, the value of the different types of uh, conversations you have at paid events versus unpaid events. Mm. And as soon as there's a financial filter, people take themselves more seriously. They take you more seriously. They value your time more. They ask better questions. They take more action Mm -hmm. because uh, for all the reasons. Um, Of course. And so I wanted to work with people who felt like, you know, who were really taking themselves seriously uh, and were taking my time seriously. And uh, so adding that financial filter. And the reality is the higher the financial filter, the more, the more, more and more competent people you end up speaking with generally, and the more people who can recognize, um, you know, uh, the value of, of, of mentorship and the, yeah. and, and the value of the information. Yeah. Um, and especially, and the reason is because they plan on using it. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. if people aren't really planning, Oh, I'm just, I'm kicking the time, you know, whatever. Like, tires, I'm, yeah, I'm tires. Learning here to learn whatever. Yeah. And it's like, that's cool. But like, when are you taking action? And the people who are, are so fun I've to already, work with. Dude, they've already paid for it. They're like, dude, I need to. Well, the <laughs> number of people I've had calls with where within the first one or two calls, they're yeah. like, I've made my, you know, made my money back already 10 15 whatever yeah. grand they made it back you know um immediately yeah. and the group the group stuff you know the, that's what's nice about it is i can provide v- a, a ton of very similar value in a group setting mm-hmm. which is far more affordable mm-hmm. and people can still be like oh that just saved me 10 grand you know mm-hmm. oh i'll work with this lender instead of this lender i'll do this reno this way yeah um you know I, i'll restructure debts this way i'll take on this act I'll, I'll approach the negotiation on this property this yeah. way boom like t- you know 10 grand 10 grand 20 yeah i made you know Oh, I'll do this deal. That deal can make me a hundred grand, you know, mm-hmm. perfect. Like, so you, you haven't, you know, and there, and the people you work with people who recognize that and mm-hmm. like, and they do really well um, yeah. because they know that they're going to take that information and run with it. Yeah. Now you mentioned that second deal really shifted your perspective. Yeah. You know, it was the first time you made what 25 grand a month, hundred grand and yeah. two years of salary condensed into four months, but doing it part time. Yeah. Um, were there any other projects that, were like really huge cornerstones, maybe not financial wins. Yeah. Like I don't really care so much about the home runs, but I do care about the ones that taught you the most Yeah, and the ones that probably taught you some pivotal lessons. Yeah. There, for me, it was projects that, um, 
had very little renovation necessary. Mm. You know, people talk about burrs. Uh, a lot of times they're picturing gutting a whole building and doing this massive renovation. Yeah. But the, the best burr deals are the ones where you barely have to put any money into it. You just have to get units turned over, get the rents up and mm -hmm. refinance it. Maybe you mm -hmm. paint the cabinets, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I've had projects where I've put almost nothing into them and wow. then they'll still over time, there's, there's of course been market appreciation and things like that, but the, mm -hmm. you know, these properties will go up in significant value just by buying great deals. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, a big mindset shift for me too, is when my portfolio got to say 10 plus buildings, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the mortgage, when I start calculating mortgage pay down and it's things wild. like that, it's, it's, it is wild. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, you can, you get a decent sized portfolio. You can easily get five, 10, 15, 20 grand a month in mortgage pay down, mm -hmm. you know? So even if things aren't cash flowing, things like that, your net worth's going up by 10, 20 grand, whatever a yeah. month. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, you know, long-term appreciation. So of course, during a market, like we've had this last while, things have dropped significantly. Yeah, so realistically, you know, from your 150, I mean, but like my net worth yeah, yeah. dropped significantly during this yeah. time. Of course it did. Right. Portfolio yeah, yeah. value dropped significantly. Luckily during mm -hmm. all that time, I was forcing appreciation on all these buildings, yeah. trying my best to counteract all of it. Right. Yeah. Doing a, a, the occasional acquisition as well, kind of keeping my portfolio, you know, it's still around like say 15 million uh, as of now, Yeah. but it's only because I've added units and like, mm -hmm. like by like, you know, converting units from one to two units or like, you know, converting a three bed into a two, one beds or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. um, and continuing to add that value along the way. How are you looking at your portfolio, like an LTV right now? Do I know one of my friends is like, dude, I'm, I'm trying not to go below 50% LTV across the whole portfolio. Right, like, right. Just, just trying to get, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, for yeah. sure. Like for the longest time, I was always trying to get to 80% loan value on everything. Okay. Um, you know, and, in terms and, of refi and you're like, yeah, let's do it. You pull as much out as you can. And generally, yeah. honestly, that is what I recommend most investors do. Okay. Um, as long as the deals they're doing are good. Um, yeah, that's what it, you recommend most investors. But what do you recommend to Kellen? <laughs> um, yeah, so I still I still do recommend that, but it's only because you know I have private loans and uh, and things like that, and so I'd rather have first position loans at a high loan to value and not have private loans. So, yeah. Um, so that's been you know I actually in 2022 um, was recognizing what was happening with interest rates and things mm -hmm. like that, and or what was it? I'm I'm losing track of dates. Okay. But anyway, I sold before, some buildings before things started getting. Wild. Yeah. When rates started changing and things like that, I was like, I can kind of see the writing on the wall here. Yeah. Um, I sold two buildings. Um, and you know, luckily those two buildings I had hundreds of thousands of equity in, so I was able to just pay off some high interest private loans, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Um, a bunch of refinances, thing, and and just like stabilize the portfolio because I saw kind of where things were heading, mm -hmm. and and I was telling people I, there are public talks I did at, like on RIA and, and yeah. these events like that. Uh, telling people this is what this is what I'm doing, yeah. um, stabilizing my portfolio, and you know it's definitely been. I'm really happy that I did that. Um, you know, rates uh, as buildings continue to hit the you know re renew and hit this new interest rate. Yeah. You know, cash flow significantly plummets. So if you're getting these rents up, mm -hmm. um, and you're 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 getting these high interest loans paid off and things like that, and mm -hmm. I think that a lot of people don't understand what it looks like to unwind this such significant amounts of private debt. I think mm -hmm. people are now understanding what that's like, but yeah. I've been talking about this for a while um and i hope and i know some people did listen some of my coaching students um were like i'm gonna sell one or two buildings as well and pay off a bunch of loans or, or just like get you know even just collect a bunch of cash right now is such an interesting time when it comes to, like Super. there's some pretty great deals out there yeah um but you have to have liquidity and most people just don't have the liquidity and the reason is because financing is di more difficult than ever you know mm -hmm. uh down payments have to be larger uh, loan to values are lower on the refi. Yeah. But if you can find yourself in a position of liquidity in any way, this is such an interesting time to take uh, take on deals. You know, they're one, 200,000 less than they used to be yeah. in London and, and all around, the, all over. So, yes. Yeah, so what, where's your thoughts around JV partners, man? Your 88 units, no JV partners. Yeah. You know, everybody's like raise financing. Yeah. Partner with people. So I, I, I still really like the idea of not, of continuing to scale my portfolio without partners. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because my, my, my coach actually has been saying, you know, hey, this might be something to think about. It's not something you have to do, but like, you know, it's not something to maybe write off entirely in, mm -hmm. at, for where I am at my stage. And a part of the reason is I'm focusing on lifestyle design for mm -hmm. myself now. Mm -hmm. Part of that means having money for myself. And yeah. as a Burr investor, you tend to always be cash poor because yeah. as soon as you take, get money, you reinvest it. Of course. So, you know, what do you do? How do you keep money in your pocket? Well, yeah. you either stop buying or you buy slower mm -hmm. um, or maybe use other people's money. Mm -hmm. And it's not something I'm planning on doing at this stage still. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that 
I think that, I mean, it has its place. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I still recommend people for the most part, try to do everything they can on their own. And it is yeah. still what I'm planning on doing. I think it has its place though. Yeah. The, the reality is now is more, now is one of the more interesting times to take on joint venture partners yeah. because debt is so expensive. Mm-hmm. So pay, paying high interest for private loans, things mm-hmm. like that makes it harder. Whereas with your part, when you partner with people, you're not paying any interest. Yeah. Uh, but Finding partners right now is also going to be a lot more difficult for people than it ever will, would have been, which ties back into the value of social media. Yeah. So if I was to bring in, bring on joint venture partners at this stage, I know that there'd be people that'd be interested. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's actually interesting. I never talk about flips. Uh, it's not something that I, um, it's, it's just not my, my not area of expertise. Yeah. Um, I'm all about long-term buy and holds, but I do think joint venture partnerships coupled with flipping right now is a particularly interesting approach because um, you know you don't have to pay the interest uh, to borrow the money to do the deal, which holding costs would be significantly higher on a flip. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can find people who have a significant amount of money to take on flips, I think it could be interesting. You know, especially at this time of year, late 2023, yeah. maybe you buy something, maybe interest rates drop at some point in 2024, you could sell in the spring or fall, spring or summer, mm-hmm. you know. Um, this will probably drop by spring, so. Yeah, so yeah. I think you guys are too late. Yeah, Sorry. too late. Well, let me know if I was right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, only time will tell, right? Yeah. Let's see. It's going to be cool to revisit this. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll do, we'll make it like a caveat where we jump in and see, like, yeah. hold on. He was so wrong. Drop. Like, rates are 10% now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is this is a big part of why I, I, I haven't done flips, is because, mm-hmm. um, and I've done some whole tales where I buy and sell something immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I really like that with long-term buy and holds, if things don't go well, you just hold, you know, for the mm-hmm. most part, as long as you're not too high leverage. Yeah. So I like that concept. It's lower mental bandwidth. I don't need to constantly keep an eye on every fluctuation in the market and things yeah. like that. I can just do my thing. Yeah. Now, when you mentioned, oh, by the way, do you remember the first time you hit a hundred grand in a month? I mean, it's probably in weird, a month. especially in real estate, because yeah. like, you might be just looking at the cash flow, but it's like, wait, if I refinance, like. I made that you know, day, it's right? it's there's no way to answer that really because yeah. um I, there's plenty of buildings where they've gone up 100 200 it ran, I, I don't know when exactly all these things happened yeah. um but yeah I mean it's happened many many times at this point yeah. um, I, probably yeah probably within a, within the first 2 years of investing though like yeah. uh, I would say that there were there were some deals where I added a ton of value really quickly, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bought it significantly in a market value and then forced appreciation quickly. Now I'm making that every month, or like in gross income. Yeah. Um, but of course my net worth's not going up by that every month. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, yeah, just under a hundred grand or so of gross rental income, it should be well over that. Mm-hmm. In in maybe in some months, right now I have an, I have an eight plex that's vacant. So uh, once I once I fill that, it'll yeah. make that alone will make. 12 grand a month and why is it was it just like a just timing as of where you are in the cycle right now why what why is it why is it vacant right now so that's been my lemon in my portfolio this building yeah so that so i bought that and you know had a it's been a long journey of trying to get vacancies in this building luckily i have enough other things on the go that it's something i'm chugging along with permit applications with the city have been a huge hassle why what are you trying to do are you trying to do something Uh, we're gonna so yeah, I am going to, I am going to do some, like, we're going to do significant renovations where we change the layouts of the building on okay. the, you know, like, so a lot why, of, why after you just said, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just, this one needs it. Okay. it, it the, 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 every unit, the, it's like this tiny little shower stall. Yeah. All of the kitchens are old and crappy. None of the walls are insulated. And you knew that when you bought it though. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, I paid 700 grand for it. It's an eight plex. Okay. Um, and even now that would be a great price. Yeah. What's um, the, what's the price per unit in London at this time, 2023? Uh, like between 150 and 200 a unit kind okay. of thing. Um, I mean, some people probably would argue more, but yeah. I, I think that's what's the designer price. What's uh, the, what's... Like, like I, it's it depends on the size ranges. of the building, but let's it say 150 a unit becomes interesting. I, I bought a triplex recently for 425. Okay. Um, so I don't even know what that is per unit, but not much. Less than 200. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like less yeah. than one. Way, way, yeah. Whatever yeah. that is. But um, just under 150, I think. Yeah. But, but um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So the lemon. Yeah, yeah, the lemon. Yeah, so it, it it needs it needs it, and all of the units. You know, I can add bedrooms. So like a lot of the one beds will turn into two beds okay. because I can take advantage of the kitchen. Like right now, they have dining rooms. Well, let's make that a bedroom. Do an open concept kitchen living room. So a bunch of them will add a significant amount of like yeah. you know the rents would be dramatically different by doing this renovation, yeah. and it will be a you know three four hundred thousand dollar reno. Yeah, um, which sucks during a time like this to be doing that. But yeah. I'm looking into construction financing. Okay, I'm also going to build a twelve plex more than likely. So. Okay. 
there's uh, another eight on the same unit uh, on the same building a, or a different, different? Uh, a, a new development um, oh no yeah way. On, this is gonna on, be your first new dev or what uh, yeah my first development ever wow yeah is yeah. that is that if we're looking into the crystal ball is that what you think i guess we'll see how this experience goes it's, like my plan like we're putting the application with the city i've yeah. we're getting drawings done right now so it's you know i'm t it's it's been something i'm just slowly like it's simmering uh okay because uh i have enough other things on the go um mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm getting Rocket drawings. League and Call Rocket League, League and yeah, exactly. I'm trying to get my kill my KD. But yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, so, that's awesome. No. That's awesome. Yeah, this this twelve flex is we're, we're, it should be interesting. I mean, now yeah. there's like like a lot of benefits with HST, mm -hmm. you know, and the federal and uh, provincial government rule changes and stuff. So yeah. that'll save hundreds of thousands yeah. potentially um, uh, for the build. So. Mm -hmm waiting to see how that all goes i think that development is going to become a particularly interesting uh thing for people to consider in the coming years why building like new builds um oh. and and infill for and people or for you for people got it um yeah for me but uh but i say it for people because um i think the government rules are going to line up with it um i wouldn't be surprised at all if we start to see a lot of strong incentives for people to build yeah um and uh, and new builds aren't under rent control. Mm -hmm. So in Ontario, you can increase the rent by as much as you want yeah. if the building was built after I 18, forget what 2018, year. 2018, I think 2018, it is. Yeah. yeah, November 2018 or something. Something along those lines. So, Man, that's so exciting, dude. Yeah, and I appreciate you taking the time to share. Uh, you know these different chapters of life, these different flavors, these different seasonings that you got. <laughs> For you sure, know man. that make Kellen Kellen. Oh, I appreciate I appreciate you coming to my house here and setting all this up. Oh too. no, it's worries, awesome. Dude. I'm excited to uh, to play around with your setup after. And, and see how we could make it look a little more Rembrandt. Yeah, if my videos start sim. looking looking a lot better, you guys yeah. have drawn to things. Right? Yeah, <laughs> cheers, cheers. I got you, man. And if uh, the show gets a little spicier, if my portfolio spices up, yeah, you, y'all got thank. <laughs> so you know, you you mentioned a lot about this whole lifestyle by design. At this and and look, I'm not going to hold you prisoner to your own words, right? And I recognize the things that you say right now might be different by tomorrow. Yeah, but as of as of now, like and this at this current moment with where you're at what does that lifestyle look like you labeled a bunch of questions what do i want my morning afternoon evening night time to look like you yeah know, like that maybe that plus the vacations like what do you want those to look like these days um i'm starting to i'm starting to develop build the lifestyle i want already sort yeah. of like i realized with adhd how important routine ends up being so <laughs> not, so <laughs> no right. no longer shiny yeah so, exactly yeah. so no longer is the yeah. gym a decision um okay. uh, i'm trying to make what i eat less of a decision making process yeah. you know oh, so like i go to the gym now monday wednesday friday at 10 a.m okay. um you know i'm gonna eat overnight oats you yeah. know most yeah. most days and yeah. you know yeah. i'm gonna eat my first meal at noon most days okay um like i'm gonna have a pretty typical like structure. Um, mm -hmm. but then, yeah, I want to be able to work like maybe two to four hours a day type mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, with the coaching, I want it to be like fewer one, -on like, you know, like a, a limited number of one-on-one -on -one people, yeah. you know, a, a group calls with as many people as makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but not super frequently, mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, I'm enjoying the process yeah. and that it's not a grind in any way you know, that social media blackout really helped me to come back to these things more intentionally. Mm. Um, and then I wanted to just be, you know, imagine, ma like imagine in some years I have, you know, we have kids and we have like, we want to travel and want to do these things. I want to make sure my business is all, you know, it already sort of is, but I yeah. want to make sure it, I want to make sure that it all lines up so that I'm not, um, taking, it's not taking away from the things I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. But play on this taboo for a second. Oh, millennials can't buy houses. You're a millennial. <laughs> Right. You know, what's I think what's Gen Z you're going to have a harder time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's uh, funny. And you, one of my one of my mentors says, dude, you think your your fifty thousand dollar problems, your hundred thousand dollars or problems. Talk to someone with million dollar problems. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, millennials can't buy houses. You're like, you think millennials are yeah, right yeah. to Gen Z. Comes, yeah. You know? Gen Z are going to have a more even harder time, I'd say. But yeah. I mean, the, like <clears throat> if you're looking to take on your first property, yeah. the structure I recommend would be five percent down. Um, move into a duplex or 10% down on a triplex or fourplex, mm -hmm. you know, 5% is going to be like, say it's a 500,000, I mean, there'd be less, but like, it'd be mm -hmm. like 20 grand, you know, yeah, yeah. that's savable for, for a decent number of people if they yeah. live frugally. So live frugally, yeah. save up a five or 10% down payment on a multi-unit building. Yeah. Uh, you know, if your town's too expensive, consider moving to some other town, you know, like moving is a big deal, but so is, you know, not being able to make progress in your finances and in your career. Nice. Um, you know, find a remote job, work somewhere, live somewhere a little more affordable, Yeah. buy a, buy a multi-unit building, live in one unit, rent the others. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, 
add value to that building, do the renos yourself, maybe for the first one or two. Yeah. Um, and uh, use a purchase plus improvements mortgage. Mm-hmm. So that's where you can get your renovation f- money back from the bank. Mm. Um, you know, if your qualifying ability isn't isn't great with the bank, well, consider you know doing what you can in your career to get your income up for qualifying ability. Yeah. Uh, maybe consider buying in a less expensive town as well, and uh, maybe couple it with other forms of active income that you can that you can add on top of it to help yeah. your debt service ratios. But just try to get in. Try to get that first one so you can get a feel for what this is like to be as a land be a landlord. Um, but yeah, the purchase plus improvements mortgage is key to get your money back out uh, from your renovations. You can couple it as well with a home buyer's plan. So mm. if you have money in your RSP, you can pull money out of the RSP tax free yeah. uh, and 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 and, only, and pay it back very slowly over like a twenty year period or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that would be the way to kind of get into it, things. Dude, it's crazy how many tools there are. Yeah, yeah. Like, the 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 idea is to stack them as yeah, well. Okay. You know, the more of these things you can apply, the more you know. A lot of people these days are also partnering with family members and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like if you can do it yourself, try to do it yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I definitely have uh, you know admiration for those who are like partnering with their brother or sister or yeah. uncle or parents or whatever to try to get this process rolling. Yeah, uh, I think that people these days have really forgotten what it's like to like have their tribe, have their village, you know, yeah. and like you know. Uh, you know, combine your wealth and, and do things together. I, mm-hmm. I think that's really rare these days. So I, I think it's really cool when people do that. What um, what unique like trade or skill do you think it is that makes Kellen Kellen? Did you're different? When did you? Re- so I. That's a good question. <laughs> I was in I was in I was in California shooting. I was shooting for some tech company. It was five five countries. In like two weeks, it was wow. a wild project. I didn't end up going to two of them because they were in a completely different time zone. Yeah, but I did all the ones on this hemisphere, wow. not hemisphere, or this half of the world. And so I'm, I'm in the hotel lobby, and I end up going to lunch or dinner with this like sixty something year old white dude, mm. right? And he's like, and I, and I told him, I said, "Yo, let's go for dinner. What do you, what are you doing? Like, we're both just sitting here at the bar solo. Like, mm. what do you say we go out for dinner?" And he's like, "No." at first right and then i start talking and he's like oh you're saying some interesting stuff like who is this yeah 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 and then he's like you know my spiritual guide says i should be more open and like when when else am i gonna have the opportunity to sit with a 30 year old black guy right (laughs) and like i'm like dude when else am i gonna sit with a 65 year old white guy right like (laughs) let's do it yeah yeah and then who is this guy this was a uh no, no, I mean just like he was a tech guy or something. Yeah, he was, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a yeah. tech guy. He okay, was, yeah. He's been doing tech sales for like yeah, forever. Cool. But he lives in Laguna Beach. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been you there, know. yeah. You've been in Laguna Beach? Yeah. Oh, nice. In, in that trip. Oh, yeah. no way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those we got our mul- van parked there. Those <laughs> multi million dollar homes along the water. Yeah, we walked along those. Yeah. That's where he's at. Dude, we probably walked right by. Probably. <laughs> but I wasn't there. So we were in uh, San Jose. Yep. Yeah, right near San Fran. Yeah. And um, so we go to, we go to, we go to um, dinner, right? And he's like, dude, when did you realize you were different? And I'm like, bro, I'm just like everybody else. And he's like, no, you're not. Like, I agree. And I'm like, fuck. Like, no, I agree. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I, th- I thought it was really interesting. Like your personality and the way that you, cool. uh, that you, when we chatted, I was like, yeah, there's something, yeah. there's something there. Likewise, yeah, bro, yeah. I, 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 I appreciate I agree. that. That's why I'm like, yo, let's do this. Yeah. Because like that, we're, we won't have this conversation over zoom and no. Like, yeah. She customize. we're going to customize your room after this. And yeah, yeah. It out. I already know what to do. It's light on the other side, camera on the other, switch the angle, boom it up, and then tilt okay, it down good, a little good. bit. That's what I need. See, yeah. mentorship. <laughs> right? Cut your time. Like, yeah, I, I'm trying to figure this out myself. It's yeah. like, get someone to help me out. Yeah. yeah, so, um, yeah, when did you realize, or before you, yeah, when did you realize you were different? I, I, I'm not sure that I ever did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that All I right. Well, if you need to realize now, I'm letting you know. No, right? I appreciate it. I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I've never really thought of it as different mm-hmm. um, like that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I know that the actions I've taken have been different from yeah. others. And what what are those what are those key like traits and decisions that you made in the past? Maybe habits that you think made Kellen Kellen? Um, like, th- yeah. So uh, so like some of the, like the key success factors or whatever, the things that have helped me along the way were like uh, asking a lot of really good questions. Yeah. Um, that's been like and that means putting your ego to the side and mm-hmm. saying like, I don't understand this. What, you know, what's, 
how does this work? You know, mm. and not pretending like I know, which I can't believe that's the default setting of a lot of people. Crazy. Um, it's like, I don't know. Can you tell me? You know, yeah. and people love to tell you things. Of course. So yeah. like, especially if they solved it. Yeah. And especially real estate investors. Like, yeah, oh, yeah exactly. People thing. love to tell you about themselves yeah. or what they know and share yeah. information. So yeah. you know, just asking, asking good questions, which means admitting what you don't know and, and, and just, you know, so every time I'd go to meetups and, and things like that, or any, I would just say, what, what am I stuck on right now? What's stopping me from moving to the next step? Okay, well, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with this or I don't know how to approach this. Well, I, I tell everyone that at that mm-hmm. event. Mm-hmm. And then I'd, cu- I'd get all of those people and I'd, cu- and I'd gather what they told me and say, well, it sounds like this is what I should do. Mm. And then I'd head that direction. Huh. Um, That's a useful approach. I appreciate yeah. that. No, yeah, no problem. Yeah. I just found myself by default doing that. It wasn't an intentional thing yeah. uh, until it was, until I realized yeah. that's what I do. And yeah, then I'm like, yeah. oh, I'll just- dude, mentorship, right? Like there's so many people now that are going to be like, oh, shoot, I should, I should adopt that goal setting framework or yeah. I should adopt that. Oh, when I'm in public, this is how I should yes. ask questions. And unofficial like, mentorship know? as well, right? Like, yeah. of course, hiring, hiring mentors and coaches can be really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, also just yeah, finding people in your life who are happy to be mentors for free is yeah. amazing, right? Yeah. Just make sure they're people who have done things you want to do. Yeah. No, you don't want to ask people questions if they don't know yeah. if they haven't done it themselves. Yeah, and it's still, but it's tough to decide what you want to do if you're still, you know, intoxicated yeah. by the social media. Right? Yeah, yeah, but you can find inspiring people. Yeah. I think that's a big thing that like you know younger people uh, struggle with in general is they'll see success from other people or whatever, and and they'll be like. Well, like they just immediately look for reasons and excuses why they got there and whatever. And sure, maybe some of those reasons exist are there. Yeah, maybe their yeah. parents had money, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, cool. But like, there's plenty of people who did find a way to make things happen. And I love, I, I really prefer to view these things as inspirational. Yeah. And I think that that is a mindset shift people have to make at some point because yeah. that's the way that you learn is by mm-hmm. saying, man, this person did something I didn't do, and mm-hmm. I want to know what they did, and I want to do it too, mm-hmm. because a lot of these things are just you can just copy people. Yeah, yeah. You know, what did, how do you build a portfolio? It's a system. You just yeah. follow the system. You know, mm-hmm, you just mm-hmm. copy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's not easy, mm-hmm. um, but it's not like, it's not rocket science. Yeah. It's not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. Dude, bu- building a rocket is 10 times harder. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Way more than 10. Way <laughs> yeah, more building than a time. portfolio honestly yeah. is way easier than starting a business. Yeah. You know, even uh, yeah. like, you know, trying to make money off a coffee shop would be way harder than trying to make money building a real estate portfolio in my opinion 100 <laughs> percent. i mean take it from the man who's done it right so what are the what are the i've books? never built a coffee shop though. Hey. <laughs> so I, who knows <laughs> well, i don't look, think the man. margins are great <laughs> yeah it's it's tough man imagine having to sell like two thousand units just to make rent you know and it's like yeah dude that's a lot yeah so what do you what are the books that made kellen kellen books and lessons keynotes like information um, so I'll, I'll rhyme a bunch off but like yeah. i'm a huge it, not just the book title but like the book and why okay and well, like i'll try not maybe... to rhyme as many off then yeah you know i mean that's okay I'll, I'll, I'll rhyme some off and then i'll tell you my favorites so okay. and why so yeah, yeah so ryan holiday is one of my absolute favorite authors with all the okay. books on stoicism okay. so he did ego is the enemy stillness is the key and uh, dis- he did Discipline is Destiny, which I haven't actually read yet. Do you string those titles together? It sounds like it could be like a mantra for life. It is. it is. He yeah. actually has them tattooed on himself, no but way. it's not like a, it's not like him being, it's not ego. It's, yeah, he did yeah. this because they're like Marcus Aurelius and some of these like Greek, you know, old, okay. like philosophers and stuff. And, and, uh, and so he put these on him because they're time tested, you know, okay. they work, they, they apply all, no, no matter what time timeline you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh yeah these are mantras you can live off of and they are my mantras i actually have i know i know i'm going on a tangent but i have a list of like core philosophies that's okay Uh, share it with us yeah that's the purpose of conversation today could run in whatever yeah yeah. i know it just sounds scatterbrained but there's uh there's two adhd we'll we'll name this one two adhd (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. and i i got an adhd diagnosis it was like maybe a year ago or six months ago finally at 32 or 33 years old and who cares dude what are you gonna do about it just keep having an adhd and rolling with it yeah yeah so so i have i have like a list of core philosophies i don't i'd have to pull but some of them up but i know like of course like the ones like ego is the enemy okay stillness is the key are, are really good ones okay. um, say no to almost everything okay is one of the one like warren buffett said that steve yeah. jobs said something very similar um i've got a i've got a list i'd have to pull them all up That's but okay. like these are things that i put on my lock screen of my phone and mm-hmm. on my back of my phone that i'd see let's every see day it. let's see it right now um, i have new ones that i'm trying to drill in right Munch now some mountain you know pretty. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh Right now, because uh, I re- I reread the book Stillness is the Key for the third time recently. So that's the one for you. That's like the... it's been the one recently. Okay. Uh, because I need to find more stillness. Mm. Um, 
has been something I've, yeah. So okay. that's something I'm trying to drill in. So yeah. I read it for the third time and now I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It, it all clicked finally. You know what's crazy? I saw this thing like years ago and it said like, uh, your relationship with books will change as you read them more. And it's yeah. like the first time you read it, it's just like you're you're just getting a taste of it. This, yeah. The second time you're, how are you on time, by the way? You're it's okay? fine. Okay. Yep. The second time you read it, you're actually understanding it. And the third time that you're reading, it, you're having a conversation with yeah. it. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. Interesting. Deep. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, I, I, and I think that you can sometimes have a conversation with it the first time if it's like, if you have something you can really, I think the reason is the first time you read a book, you're trying to understand what they're talking about. And then yeah. at some point you're starting to try to figure out how you can apply this to your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I read this, the physical book for the first time. This It was the third time I read it, but the first time physical reading it. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was, I thought it made sense for a book like Stillness is the Key to sit down and read a real book oh, and wow. not be distracted and not yeah. multitask. And so, yeah. So anyway, it, it all clicked for me. And so right now I have like stillness. I just put stillness and yeah. I said, take your time. Take your time. Because I just don't take my time with things. It's ADHD brain. It's yeah, I, I, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. take, take my time. It's okay to, to just take my time, do this slowly, just mm -hmm. be consistent. Um, you know, right now I put this literally on my phone as of yesterday. I was just driving home. When I drive, I tend to not have like any music or anything on. I just kind of be able, that's a Thanks. moment for stillness to yeah. finally have, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when you're on a plane, that's when a lot of people start to really think, right? It's the mm -hmm. first time they don't have internet. They don't have oh, yeah. anything to really distract them very well. And they finally are alone with their thoughts. Mm -hmm. The other time is right before bed, you know, mm -hmm. which is like a terrible time to finally give yourself time to think. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so I just wrote this down yesterday. This isn't something I read anywhere, okay. um, but is, it's like Kellen James quotable right here. Yeah, I was just right. Like, you know, if you have a task that feels like a wall. So like with ADHD and a lot of people, I'm sure you just sometimes there's certain tasks. You're just like, man, like this thing has been on my list for months. I just mm. can't get myself. I think like I'm going to try this. I don't know if it'll work, but I know that it's my obstacle. Mm -hmm. Right. And that therefore maybe it's the way it's the thing I need to do. Um, but so like slow down push through and just like shatter that obstacle and you'll okay. feel a lot better. Yeah. I know that I've done that with certain things that have been on my list forever. When I finally get through it, I feel a massive weight off my shoulders. Yeah. What was the obstacle that made you put that there? Honestly, right now it's set at creating a bookkeeping system. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that, an, that's a hell of an Dude, obstacle for me. Same. I hate it. Yeah, and, and I think most entrepreneurs uh, are pretty bad at it. Yeah, so yeah. having a proper bookkeeping system and not that, not to say that I don't have anything, yeah. but it could be a lot better. Yeah. I understand. Um, understand. And so that was one that I'm like, I need to do this. Yeah. There's a few others, but, Fair. um, yeah. So anyways, so I have a bunch of core philosophies. I've gotten them from a lot of these books and yeah. from just life. Um, so the books that make Kellen Kellen. Yeah. So, you know, I really loved, I did really like four hour work week. Some okay. of the con like a bunch of the concepts in it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a book called blue fishing. I really like as well, okay. uh, which not a lot of people talk about, but it's a cool one. It's like, uh, one of the lines from it though is don't be easy to understand, be impossible to misunderstand. Mm. Um, which I thought was really great when it came to like communicating with con contractors, communicating with like other investors, whatever it is, you know, your mm -hmm. relationships, just be very clear mm -hmm. about you want, what you want with contractors. You have to be, mm -hmm. um, because otherwise it'll just be done wrong. Yeah. And so that ties in with another book called, uh, called, um, extreme ownership by Jocko Willink. Oh, um, so that's an amazing book. Um, that's what I get all my students to read initially because like, you know, Hey, coaching is here to learn from me, but at the end of the day, you have to do everything, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to take all the actions. So, you know, everything is your fault, whether it's, you know, a win or a loss, it's mm -hmm, your fault. It's mm -hmm. the way to view, view everything. Um, actually you talked about, it's interesting. You talked about this uh old white guy i guess the tech guy who yeah who uh dude old to... white guys taught me a lot man yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 i'll be real with you but but like the 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 idea of like being more oh, spiritual whatever like i'm mm. not a particularly spiritual person but i really like the book um the alchemist Fuck, have you have you read it so yeah that's the good omen yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that might have been his good omen right did. it's the best it's that's, a really good I, favorite book really i read like six times this i've yeah. only read it twice oh maybe three gosh. times i'm gonna read it many more times yeah have yeah. you read the pilgrimage or i i have it i haven't read it though I, I, no i don't want to i don't want to like I, i'm i really like the alchemist and i'm really pu i'm trying to push to get through the pilgrimage See? i, I but like is it are all walls meant to run through no i agree yeah. and this isn't an obstacle worth worth in my opinion maybe you'll enjoy it okay. but i mean i think i really like the alchemist because it was a fiction book yeah and this i think is him legitimately like going on his own journey 
Mm-hmm. And I think he believes, I don't know. And I have, I have, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe listeners are like, you're, you completely <laughs> misunderstanding <laughs> this, but like, it's, it's the yeah. author of the alchemist yeah. going on a journey. It's him, Paulo, yeah. right, like on, a, you know, in uh, other countries and stuff and doing his thing. And, and it's like super, like he's doing all these crazy things. And I'm like, mm-hmm. does he believe this? I don't really understand. Yeah. Anyway, not a, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm, I'm on like the last few pages of it right now. Okay. Okay um but anyways okay. so yeah the alchemist is good blue fishing extreme ownership yeah this stillness yeah four um, hour work week any others I, there's a bunch more and i just can't think of any others That's okay. right now but yeah hey, those man. are those are some of my favorites as of now yeah. um and bro look it might change tomorrow yeah but for exactly. now that's what we got i'm a huge fan right now of, of physical books really? uh and that i was doing a ton of audiobooks and i think that's mm-hmm. great you know it was great if you're driving all that stuff yeah um and working or whatever but uh, when it comes to like, uh, one of the recent things I changed is mm-hmm. like the thing everyone says, which is don't go on your phone before bed. Mm-hmm. We all know you shouldn't. Everyone does it anyway. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's an obstacle that I need to address. Okay. And so now before bed, uh, well, an hour before bed or so, let's say even half an hour before bed, I put mm-hmm. my phone in my office to charge mm-hmm. and I get a book and I read in bed before I go to sleep. And mm-hmm. it's been a game changer mm-hmm. because I'm having a moment of stillness. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm away from my phone. I'm able to like calm my mind down before I sleep. I sleep better, which wow. has all of the consequences. Okay. It helps you in the gym, helps okay. you with your relationship. You're more patient. You're, mm-hmm. It helps everything. Okay. So like, just put the phone in another room, half hour before bed and go read a book. 20, even 10 minutes before bed, mm-hmm. you know, like whatever, just something to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, 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 don't fall asleep to a screen exactly all it's right. brutal all yeah right. and, and and i feel a me like within like two or three days i was like i've i don't even want to anymore wow um so similar to the the social media blackout it feels okay. like this wall until you do it and then you're like yeah that wasn't that bad yeah yeah um so and the nice thing about it is by by definition you also don't wake up with your phone mm. because it's not in the room mm-hmm. so within the first you know you want to protect the first hour of the day it talks about it and stillness is the key um because that's when you wake up with a natural stillness. You know, mm-hmm. you're you're thinking about things that you wouldn't otherwise think about when you're constantly being distracted and pulled in different directions. Mm-hmm. You wake up and you're with your thoughts. And so not immediately reaching for your phone because it's not there helps. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so even just the first 10 minutes of the day without a phone, just yeah. something, you know, yeah, before you yeah. go into that office and grab it uh, makes a big difference. And you might find that Maybe for the first half hour, 45 minutes, you don't even want to look at it because you know it's just yeah. going to be a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, you, you, who cares? you know, go for a walk instead, maybe, or whatever, yeah. you know? Interesting. Yeah. Dude, interesting perspectives, man. I really appreciate you taking the time to share that with us. Yeah. Now, you've, you've been so gracious with your time today, you know, and, and, and shared some of your perspectives, some of your beliefs, some of the things that you're actively doing, some of the things that you might be doing, some of the things that you have done, right? How can we, how can we help you? you know? I, I've always struggled to answer that question. I think that people who are, and this isn't for you guys, but yeah. p- for people who are asking that question to other folks, yeah. um, the the goal is to identify ways that you can help them. And yeah. that's what you've already done, which is great. Hey, can I, I'll help you out with your video setup, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are like, I've had people, hey, can I work for you? Can I like, I'll work for free. I'll do whatever. Like, and I'm like, I don't know what you do. Yeah. So I think what people need to do is, that you want. <laughs> yeah, they need to they need to get to know the person, figure out how they could help them, and present them with that. I'll do this for you. Yeah, yeah. And that's the way to approach that, I think, um, uh, because I've, I've I've never had an answer for people when they ask me that because yeah. you know. Yeah, we're it's a hard about, question to we're answer. Talk about the audience, man. Just let them know where to follow you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm on, uh, yeah, yeah, Kellen James on Instagram, uh, KellenJames.ca. Uh, that's where all like my coaching and mentorship stuff is. But you know, yeah. so all of my podcasts, guest appearances, things like that, I'll link to like this once it's released on my cool. website as well. And yeah, there's tons of free content to go through. So yeah, well, yeah. man, thank you so much. Yeah, really yeah. Appreciate absolutely. You. Like likewise. So, uh, so that wraps up another episode of 100 Ways to Make 100K. We are here all the way in London, Ontario, with none other than Kellen James. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we will see you on the next one. Peace.